as the Dean of Canterbury and on behalf of our chapter in this community, a warm welcome to our service of Choral Evensong. Welcome also to those who will be joining with us online as we live stream this act of worship. We gather in the season of Easter, it lasts for six weeks in the church calendar, so whilst the world has gone back to normal out there, as it were, we continue to reflect on the great gifts of Easter. In this service this evening, uh, we'll also have a short homily, as has become our tradition. And this evening, uh, Chloe Sanyu is going to speak with us. Chloe grew up as part of our community here in Canterbury, still is a server and assists with our Sunday club, working with young people, and is now studying for an MPhil at Newman College, Cambridge. This evening, our service is sung by Canterbury Cathedral Lay Clarks. We sit as the lay clerks sing our psalm, Psalm 142, which can be followed in the small red prayer book on page 529.
The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, beginning to read at the seventh verse. It was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and who repays in their own person those who reject him. He does not delay, but repays in their own person those who reject him. Therefore, observe diligently the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that I am commanding you today. If you heed these ordinances by diligently observing them, the Lord your God will maintain with you the covenant loyalty that he swore to your ancestors. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. Here ends the first reading.
second chapter of the revelation of St. John the Divine, beginning to read from the first verse. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring, a patient, enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested and for 10 days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. Here ends the New Testament reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Give 
The lay clerks sing our anthem by John Taverner, Dum Transisset Sabbatum, alternating polyphony and plain chant, its long flowing and graceful lines carry the story of the three women arriving at the empty tomb on Easter morning, bringing spices to anoint the body of Jesus.
As I stand here today, I'm reminded of the power of faith and the call to seek justice in the world we live in. As a student, I often find myself grappling with the tensions that arise between theory and practice, especially when it comes to achieving social justice, and particularly as someone who conducts research on gender equality in the context of the international development policies of the UK government. Upon logging onto my laptop most mornings, perhaps to my own detriment, I immediately look through the news. When doing so recently, I came across the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, saying that the goal of gender equality is slipping even further out of reach. In his words, being 300 years away from realization. With a statistic like that, one cannot always feel so optimistic about not only the present, but also the future. Amid these struggles for social justice, I often feel quite despondent. How can we, as believers, reconcile the injustices we see with the love and compassion of our Creator? It is easy to become discouraged and disheartened, especially when the world outside of our cultivated spaces is often so unkind and unforgiving. But as I reflect on this Easter season, I am reminded of the hope and promise of new beginnings. And it is those cultivated spaces, for me being the seminar rooms, the lecture theatres, the conversations that happen by chance in the co college corridors on the way to lunch, that remind me and draw me back to consider what is possible. After all, God asks us to not be doubtful that change is possible and that justice can be achieved. It is a reminder that even in the darkest of times, I must hold on to my faith and continue to fight for what is right. Since October, I have embarked on the journey of postgraduate study, sharing the experience of my course with 26 other people from different walks of life, nations and ages, some with faith, some with none. That said, my course mates and I are drawn together by the hope that we can be part of a world free from injustice, where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. It is in those moments, in the seminar rooms, in the lecture theatres, a feminist utopia comes to life rich and thought-provoking conversations are evoked, all while underpinned by an ethic of care. Upon reflection, in ways that are so subtle, without any immediate recognition, I am reminded that despite the challenges we face as a society, God calls out to, one to say that one must continue to work towards a better world. That said, the story of Easter serves as a reminder to never lose hope. He is with us as a guiding force in this quest. Holding tight to those new or perhaps renewed imaginations and possibilities, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is an illustration of the hope and redemption that his life brings. With Christ's ability to resist the status quo, and challenge oppressive structures, I am called to have faith that the world can be transformed into a more just and equitable place. With that, through and beyond these cultivated spaces, Jesus asks not only me, but all of us as a collective to not be doubtful that such goals can be realized, but to have faith that with his grace, all things are very much possible with devotion, love, and perseverance. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that in this Easter season, we may have the faith and hope to know our Lord as risen indeed. 
O Lord Jesus Christ, through your rising again, hope has been renewed, joy has been restored, and life has been recreated for this whole world. Give us grace to praise you in our hearts, that with prayer and song we may re-echo that hymn of joy which your Easter began. O Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We keep a few moments of silence as we consider our hope for ourselves, for one another, and the world in which we live. Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. For we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Amen. In a moment we will sing our hymn during which our stewards will pass around red bags to receive your cash donations. This will go towards the music, mission and care of our cathedral, which costs nearly £30,000 every day. There's also an electronic donation point near the door as you leave. Please do give as generously as you're able and thank you for your support. So we stand to sing our hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven and Voices Raise, number 194, 194.
Let us pray for God's blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat gives us a new hope and a new future, fill us with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen.